The online marketing model, in theory, is quite straightforward. You have a website which promotes, sells your service. You are then driving traffic through to that website so people can actually view your service. You then turn that traffic into conversions. And what we mean by conversion is by making a sale, getting an inquiry, getting sign-ups, whatever your business model is catered to deliver. What we then want to do is turn those conversions into a loyal consumer base to keep coming back for more, setting yourself up for repeat business. So the model is quite straightforward. But what we have found when talking to businesses is that the problems they have with this model or the problems they encounter when doing digital marketing activities can be categorized into three sections. Number one, they're not getting enough traffic through to the website in the first place. Number two, if they are getting traffic, not enough of that traffic contains enough quality leads, therefore not returning enough conversions. Or number three, they got enough traffic coming through the website that traffic contains quality leads, but their website is then failing to turn those leads into conversions. So what I would like to talk to you today about is the five phases of marketing, which is a model that we have put in place, and if implemented, can actually overcome these factors. And what it will aim to result in is to give you a way of marketing that lowers the risk of your investment and increases the rate of your conversions. That is a successful marketing campaign. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'd like to kick off by the first stage, which is the most important phase for any service, any industry, any process, and that's research. Without research, you're walking blind. The quality of work that you do here sets the tone for the rest of your campaign. With research, you're able to get knowledge, data, information, which makes your decisions throughout the campaign less of a risk. It makes you confident of the way that you're spending your money because you know that you've got it backed up. You've got a navigation, you've got a direction to dictate how you proceed. Now, research, I break it down into two stages. Research by data, research by learning. Research by data begins by asking a simple, simple question. Who is your customer? Who are they? What do they want? When do they want it? How do they want it? Why do they want it? I want to know the behavior and characteristics of your customer. And I want to make a differentiation here. Your customer and a customer are two different things. We want to find out who your customer is. We want to find out their behavior, their characteristics, so then we can target them specifically and tailor your campaign towards them. And to do that, we build what's called an ideal customer profile. We find out the behavior and characteristics of those customers and build a profile. Now, why do we build a customer profile? Well, it goes back to my earlier point that I made. When you drive traffic through to the website, you need to, con you need to make sure that that traffic contains enough quality leads so you get a better chance of conversions. Now, in order to get quality leads, you need to build a customer profile and you need to find out which of the demographic is going to be most interested in your service. Who are the customers that you're going to get most success from? And by doing that, by building that profile, you then don't go into the market and spend an investment across the whole demographic. Rather, you find a segment and you filter your investment, target your investment towards that specific segment. So you're making the most of your investment and there's a less, there's, sorry, there's more chance of getting success from that customer. Right. What we then do, once we find out who your customer is and we find out what the profile of your customer is, we then build a strategy to find out how we can target them. How do we get that message to them? We know what they want. Now it's about building a strategy to communicate that to them. We want to identify what the current state of market is. Who's in the market? What, where is the market going? Where are the gaps in the market? We want to build a strategy to exploit those gaps. To be able to give your customer something different. To be able to communicate a narrative. And this is what we want to do. Build a narrative to talk to them in their language. Now let me give you an example why this is important. I'm going to take the example of a banking company. Banking company, they provide banking halls for weddings, conferences, parties. Now this particular banking hall, uh, company rather, 
they want to target, the biggest source of revenue is wedding halls. When they rent out wedding halls, it brings a lot of success for them. They want to capitalize on that. So when they run their campaigns, they are going into the market with the term Bangladeshi halls because that's what the industry is. But when we do the research and when we find the data for their ideal customer, we find that actually, when searching for banking halls, it only re returns 20,000 searches per month. And these are all hypothetical data, by the way, so don't hold me to it. But what we can see, wedding venues, on the other hand, actually returns 50,000 searches per month, showing that actually your customer is not searching for what you think they're going to be searching for. They're searching for something different. They're searching for wedding venues. That's the strategy. That's the narrative. So then you need to tailor your campaign and focus it on that. So, once we have the data in place, we've got your ideal customer profile, we've got a strategy to target them, we now enter what's called research by learning. Research by learning is putting that data, putting that strategy into practice and seeing what returns the best results. You can view it as a trial and error method. What we do, we build the campaigns based on the data that we found, we run it into a live test campaign to the market, to real users, and we see what they come back with. And we do this by using something called A-B testing, where we take the data, we create two variations of a campaign, Exhibit A and Exhibit B, which comes with different terminologies and different offers, as you can see on the slides, and then we see which returns the best results. So in this example, we see, for example, Exhibit A would return the best results, the best return of conversions, so then what we do, we take that and then we create two further variations of it. We create two further variations of it to see now which one gets even more success. So what we're doing here is if we're filtering variations, we're filtering campaigns to see which campaign can we get it down to that returns the most success. And by doing this, you're in a position then when you are investing your money that again, there's low risk because you know it works. You've seen it work. And you know that this is the best campaign to give you the best possible results. So you're lowering your risk of investment and increasing your chance of conversion. And that's what we do in research by learning. This then actually overlaps into the next phase, which is called the enticement phase. Because you build your profile, your customer profile, you build a strategy to target them, and then you do the test to see which campaigns actually work. But during this process, you enter this phase, which is creating the campaigns. And this is what we call the enticement phase. Because in the enticement phase, this is where you input your creativity. This is where you get creative. This is where you use the strategy, the data that you found in the previous phase, which is all about strategy. And you input it in this phase, which is about creativity. Here you create the campaigns, the social media campaigns, the videos, the ads, whatever it is that you want to do. You input your creativity. Because I am a firm believer, from my experience, that to get best results in digital marketing, you need to be able to combine strategy with creativity. Marketing is not all about data heads. It's about creativity. It's about how you are creative with those data that you find. And that's what we do at this phase. We create the campaigns to entice your audience. Because the internet is like an ocean. It's very, very big. And there's a lot of people out there competing for the same audience that you are competing for. You need to be able to stand out. You need to be able to attract your audience in a way that others won't be able to do. So now, we've done the research, we've found your customer, your ideal customer, we've targeted them with a strategy, we've made an enticing ad, now what happens? Well, if you've managed to successfully entice your customer and they've actually clicked on your campaign, they are taken to what is called a landing page. A landing page is a web page, but it's a web page specifically designed and tailored to promote the campaign that they initially clicked on. Because when the user clicks on that campaign, they clicked on it specifically because whatever it was that you were advertising. So that specific product or that specific service. They don't want to be able to, they don't want to have to then go into your website homepage and then navigate through your whole menu to find that product that they were looking for. You want to be able to give it to them straight away. And that's what we call a landing page. Now, when they're on that landing page, they go through what we call the consideration phase. Because now they're in a moment of considering whether they want to buy your product or not buy your product. They've seen your campaign, they've showed some interest, and they've clicked through, and they want to find out more information. In this stage here, they are considering whether they want to go ahead with your service, with your product, whether they want to buy it, whether they want to sign up, or whether they want to go. And you've literally got a few seconds to convince them. 
his attention spans are very, very low. You've got a few seconds to convince them to stay or go. And I'm telling you now, as a business, the sole reason they will stay and the sole reason they will go is you. You will convince them to stay or you will convince them to go. Now you might be asking, why would I as a business convince my user to get off my page in the first place? That sounds quite ridiculous. But let's think about it. If your web page is not communicating the quality, the trust, the service, in a way that attracts and appeals to the customer, if your brand is not strong enough and that's not being communicated through to your, from your website to your customer, then you're losing them. You are driving them away from your website. You. Because you haven't put the time, you haven't put the effort, you haven't put the investment into making sure that A, your brand is quality, and B, it's being communicated through to your website. So that's, that's some food for thought. You've got to make sure that you're not losing out because if you're losing your customer, it's not, it's, you're simply not losing money there. You're driving your customer to your competition. And that's a big, big problem. So we need to make sure when they do go on the landing page that the web page is communicating trust, quality, and your brand and is giving and connecting to the audience as they are hoping that it would. Now there's a few things that you can do on a landing page to ensure that it does communicate the quality and it does convince your user to actually make a sale, make a purchase. And a few things here, if, and we're using the example of our, of our banking company here. The titles are always very important. Attract them, tell them what it is that you're selling. A price can use, usually be useful. Photos, images, especially with a bank in the call, you need to tell them what it is that they see, what it is that they can buy. Attract them with a video. Video creates trust. It connects with the audience. It tells them that this is real, this is, this is what they can achieve, this is what they can receive. Give the features of your, of your company or your product. What, why are you different? What can you give them that no one else can give them? And here's something that's very useful. We call it social proof. This is where you get endorsements, recommendations, testimonials. Show them that other people have endorsed this. Remove any doubt from their minds that this service is not for them. And obviously, you need to have some, photo, some sort of data capturing mechanism, whether that's a form, whether that's a sign-up, whether that's a phone number, whether that's a buy button, something there that actually forces them to make an action. Now, if they've bought your product after this, after they've seen your landing page, and they've actually gone and made a, sale, made a purchase, signed up, whatever it is, then great, you've made a return on your investment. If they haven't, then you can either say, well, I'll focus my efforts on the ones that are really interested and I'll let them go away. Or you can be clever and you can enter what we call the endurance phase. This basically means you've identified that someone's come through to your website by clicking a campaign. But for whatever reason, they didn't go ahead with the, with the conversion. Now, clearly, they were interested in some capacity to have clicked on your campaign in the first place. So there's some interest there. But then when going onto the landing page, during that consideration phase, for some reason or another, they didn't buy. And we're going to take the assumption that your brand and your website is of a good level. So then it comes down to a few reasons. Maybe it was too expensive. Maybe it was more of a want than a need. Maybe they didn't want it right now. And they wanted to window shop. What we need to do now, and this is what we do in the endurance phase, is we then track their activity online while they're still in that consideration phase and we then re-promote, re-market that same campaign but now with an incentive. So wherever they go online, they will see that same campaign appear again because they were interested enough to click on it. They're still in that consideration phase and we want to now convince them with an incentive. A few incentives we can use. Incentive of price. They saw that, they saw the ad in the first place. It was too expensive. So I remarket it now with an incentive of price let's say 5% off. We can introduce the incentive of time. 5% off if you buy within 24 hours. We can add an incentive of fear. Fear of losing out. Fear of missing out. Only two products left. It creates a sense of urgency. It creates a sense of, I need this now. It changes from a want to a need. Now, if you've managed to do that, you've managed to set up a marketing campaign that allows you to identify who your customer is. It allows you to build a strategy that can connect with them and take you to the exact 
customer base that you are trying to target. It allows you to create exciting, enticing campaigns that attracts their attention. And then it allows you to follow up and create a repeat business model. But does it just stop there? Well, it does if you want a good marketing campaign. If you want a great marketing campaign, you enter what we call the intelligence phase. In the intelligence phase, you are able to then set yourself apart. You are able to be clever with your marketing. You're able to identify what is working in your marketing, what is not working in your marketing, and you're able to then tailor it to make the most of opportunities. You can capitalize on what's doing well and, uh, as opposed to what's not doing well. And to do this, we've introduced a product called Smart Sense. Smart Sense is a smarter, sensible approach to marketing, a clever way of marketing that puts you in control of your marketing activities and allows you to see what's doing well and what's not doing well. What Smart Sense allows you to do is identify where your leads are coming from, how they're getting there, why they're getting there, what tools on your website is causing them to make a sale, to buy, to purchase, to show interest. It allows you to know what time of day they're doing it, what time of year they're doing it. It allows you to say what their behaviors are when they're on your website. And all this information, what it allows you to do is build a overview and to see and identify the hot areas. So for example, if you were a clothing store and you were able to see that baseball caps went off the shelves like fire during the summer, and you saw actually when you analyze that data, you see that the most amount of sales, 80% of your sales were coming between Friday evenings and Monday evenings. And they were being made by males. Now you've got a product that you know is doing well. You know what time of year is doing well. You know what demographic is actually interested in it. What you then do is cater your marketing efforts and you target that. You capitalize on momentum and you make sure that your investment now is not being spread over the whole year or seven days a week. It's more focused on the summer period during those specific times, Friday evening to Monday evenings, to, to that specific demographic, talking their language. You're now setting yourself up to get a better, productive, effective marketing campaign. You're setting yourself up to get the most of your investment, and that's what SmartSense can do. SmartSense can allow you to be clever with your marketing. It can allow you to be clever with your money. And at the end of the day, what it does and what this whole process does, it goes back to what I was saying. It lowers the risk of your investment and increases the chance of conversion. And that's what a great digital marketing campaign does.